Our U.S. forces just got some near-peer pressure from China in the form of their next-generation primary rifle called the QBZ-191. It's the most lethal thing to come out of China in 2019. Well, almost. This change couldn't have anything to do with the potential invasion of Taiwan, could it? Nah. Once we dive into the QBZ-191, we'll notice something really weird. The inner mechanics of this rifle look like it's a clone of the American Army's old M16 rifle. It's even got similar augmented lasers and optics. But don't jump to conclusions just yet, because looks can be deceiving. China's changing more than just their primary rifle here. They're adjusting their whole military strategy. They want to be more in line with what a wealthy, burgeoning superpower should look like. They're flexing on the world stage with the QBZ-191. So while the US is working hard to replace the old AR series and change to a higher caliber, we have the PLA working hard to create a better version of the AR and sticking to their old, smaller caliber. In this video, we're going to analyze what our near-peer adversaries China is up to. And we'll speculate a little bit about how this might change their combat tactics in the event of an invasion of Taiwan. If you look at the way that the next-gen QBZ-191 was first revealed to the whole world, it tells us a lot about why they made this switch now. We first saw the firearms in the hands of their regular infantry in 2019 when their army marched straight down Tiananmen Square to celebrate the 70th anniversary of their country. You might remember Tiananmen Square from having no other events of historical importance ever happening there. It can't be understated how important it is that they chose to reveal this new firearm at this historic milestone for their country. It's not a coincidence, not like someone just turned around at their desk and was like, oh, finally I finished the QBZ-191. Oh, it just so happens to be the day of that big parade? Let's give the infantry this thing. No, we know that they've been developing this weapon since at least 2015, because in 2017, that's when the first images of this firearm were leaked through an article in the firearms blog. Just like the last time China revealed a new primary weapon that they wanted to showcase, they wanted the whole world to see that they turned a corner, not just as a country, but as a military. I've talked about how in the past, the Chinese army looked like they were stuck in like 2001. They didn't really have any night vision mounts on a lot of their outdated helmets, and they didn't really have much ballistic body armor on even in their promotional videos. Now every helmet features a NODS mount and what looks to be like a similar night vision to the old US PBS-14, the generation of night vision that I used in 2008. They all wear ballistic plates. Much of their gear looks like it's on par with modern US Army. They'll probably reverse engineer the enhanced night vision soon enough, don't worry. Look at how this weapon now has Picatinny rails on the top and bottom, unlike the QBZ-95. In the modern age, military rifles are required to have space on the rails for multiple optics and night fighting capabilities. China's old bull pups couldn't accommodate this growing new need. A YouTuber by the name of Cabbage did a very thorough analysis of all of the leaks and open source information on the QBZ-191, which I've linked to in the description. But according to Cabbage, the DMR version is called the QBU-191, and it could very well be a free-floated barrel that is on this weapon system. So what we're really seeing here is that the PLA is focused more on the quality of each individual soldier. This next-gen rifle is a reflection of the PLA moving away from a conscription force model to a professional one, one that can take advantage of a more sophisticated firearm because they're investing more in the training of the soldiers. You know, for approximately the past 20 years, the PLA has been using the bullpup QBZ-95, but with this new QBZ-191, they're moving away from bullpup to a traditional layout. China has always been very secretive about their small arms programs, unlike the United States, where they let any random YouTuber from Long Island fire their next generation prototypes. Unlike in the United States, where our military weapons programs are the result of a competition between many companies, in China, their next-gen rifle was made by one, Norinco, which is the major defense company, the major defense manufacturer in that country. There are some pros and cons that come along with having the government have full control of a weapons development. On the plus side, they have more resources and more focus. But on the downside, that won't necessarily translate to a better weapon system due to the corruption and bureaucracy that is inherent in state-run programs. However, in the case of the QBZ-191, it appears that they actually got what they wanted with this strategy. At first, when I looked at this, I thought its stock was foldable, but when you look at a cutaway of the weapon, it seems to have a lot in common with the M16, including a recoil spring and a buffer tube that goes into the back of the buttstock, which prevents it from being a foldable stock. Cabbage did a very thorough, well-researched video on this topic, 
And he mentioned how the PLA also released a new DB191 upgrade to their ammo. But right now, no one really knows how this affects the ballistics. If I had to guess, I would say they're probably tweaking the propellant for higher muzzle velocity and pressures now that the firearm can handle that. From what we understand, the muzzle velocity for this weapon system is gonna be around 3,000 feet per second. This new ammo type, I think, will be focused on velocity to potentially defeat the US Army's body armor. I have to point out, no one drills like the PLA infantry. When I had to do about face in the military, I fell every time. On the plus side, I never had to worry about being sent to a re-education camp. This new weapon now has an upper and lower receiver. Again, it looks very similar to the AR series in terms of its design. There's some quality of life improvements here as well, like an ambidextrous firing selector, making this weapon easier to fire as a righty or a lefty. They've also placed the fully automatic mode right after safe, so that the fastest way to fire is to go full auto, which is different than most firearms all around in any military. It's an interesting choice, which leads me to believe China's prioritizing the tactic of getting in close and laying down a ton of fire. They also made the decision to not include a three round burst, which I like because as you know, I'm emphatically against the three round burst. I think it's a half measure. It's a bullshit design choice made for people who never had to fully commit to anything. It's the kind of decision that's made by focus groups that's sitting around making damn compromises. No, the chairman would never allow compromise. We must have full auto or nothing. With the new design, they were able to give it a faster rate of fire, 750 rounds per minute instead of the old 600 rounds per minute. With the QBZ-191, this new rifle, this traditional firearm, we see not just a new rifle, but we also see a whole new PLA infantryman system. In the past, a lot of military articles that analyze open source defense information, they made a big deal about how China is able to produce infantry very cheaply and very quickly for their average soldier versus the cost of the US soldier, which is very expensive. I think China is making a major shift here with their military strategy, moving away from their approach of just pumping out quantity and leaning more towards quality, which makes sense as a country because they're more powerful and they're adjusting their strategy accordingly. When I look at how all militaries evolve through the decades, they all follow this clear trajectory as they upgrade based on what they can afford. It's iterative. And but here we're seeing a big leap in the iterations because up until recently, it looked like they were playing catch up until now. I'm not suggesting that the PLA is simply playing copycat with the USA. I think they're analyzing what works from afar and implementing new solutions that are even better. I know I mentioned in the last video about the QBZ-95 saying that it was perfect for their strategy because it was compact and it could fit into vehicles easily, but the QBZ-191 also has a variant that's very compact as well. Their carbine version has a 10.5 inch barrel, making that version shorter than most M4s, while the standard version is 14.5 inches. Something interesting to note was that I couldn't find any purpose-built DMR. There's no real equivalent to like the M14 in the PLA small arms library, as far as I could see. Maybe someone has uh, more information than me on this. But this is just another footnote in support of my theory that the PLA appears to be not as concerned with long range engagements. Before we dive deeper into the QBZ-191, I wanted to say that in this video and the last one about the PLA's QBZ-95, I poke fun at them and I got some people upset in the comment section. If you look through the military content that I've been making for the past two and a half years, you'll see that I often make fun of my own fellow US forces. I'm critical of our own American equipment all of the time. I also poke fun at myself because I know I'm just a guy on a green screen living in a tiny apartment with thin walls. No one really seems to mind when I joke about allied NATO military forces. You know, they recognize that my intention, I'm telling you, I'm coming from a good place. It's all in good fun. But the second I talk about the CCP, for some weird reason, everyone gets all sensitive as if they're being monitored by some large authoritarian government. At the end of the day, I hope the US finds a way to cooperate with the Chinese that at the same time doesn't make the US bend their notion of what freedom means, because those are foundational to us. I understand making this video is probably gonna give me a negative 5,000 social score over in China. The joke's on them because I already have a terrible credit score right here in my own country. Back to the rifle. When the QBZ-95 was in development in the 1980s, that was right before the widespread understanding of how important optics, scopes, and attachments would be in the future. My own analysis is that China recently saw how valuable these attachments and scopes were during the fighting in Afghanistan and they wanted a weapon that could support these solutions in the future. Remember, Afghanistan is right on China's border, and it's important to them that there's relative stability in that country. There are some articles suggesting that it might be their turn next to send forces to Afghanistan. 
what is it, like some world superpower rite of passage to occupy Afghanistan? We all take turns occupying the country, trying to create stability there. It's undeniably a valuable geographic location seated right between China and Pakistan. The British had their go of it before Russia took their turn in the 1980s and then America took a shot in the 2000s. And now it looks like China's gonna be doing their version of military show and tell on the world stage by increasing their presence there. This is just me speculating. China appears to be running two optics on the QBZ-191. There's the Q Mark 192, and the other is the Q Mark 171. This is a three times magnified scope, which is one less magnification than the four times ACOG that the US runs. It also doesn't appear to have a battery compartment, which would let soldiers use these illuminated reticles without the power of the sun. The PLA has become more brash and more confident in the last two years. They've been militarizing islands that are disputed in the South China Sea. While the initial invasion of Taiwan would probably be a success for them, they're more worried about holding on to their gains from a well-organized US reaction. In order for them to hold Taiwan, they need weapons that support night fighting capabilities. They need a weapon like the QBZ-191. Their old rifle had problems running scopes because of its high height over bore. Engagements in Taiwan would likely be less than 300 meters. A lot of the geography of Taiwan is unusual. There's a lot of mountains in the western region. And in the eastern part, there's a lot of open sloping plains. Those mountainous areas would cause choke points. So I learned there's actually a lot that's going into the design of this magazine. They have to consider the weight of the bullet, they have to consider the velocity of the bolt in order to determine how the magazine spring should be loaded. The operator can now see when they go below five bullets, which is very useful. So I wanna know what are your thoughts on the QBZ-191? Is China just copying the M16 platform? Have they, are they improving on it? Do you like the direction that this weapon is going in? Do you agree or disagree with some of the points I made? I'm looking forward to talking with you all in the comment section about this. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Follow me on Instagram at CappyArmy and be sure to check out one of our other videos while you're here.